thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your holding this hearing, and I want to welcome all of our witnesses and uh, this uh, uh, capacity uh, crowd in the audience to a hearing on a topic that goes to the heart of copyright law. What is the scope of copyright protection? The committee will hear testimony on three related issues. The first issue concerning a making available right seemed to be settled by the U.S. accession to two separate WIPO treaties in 1988. However, uncertainty has arisen in several file sharing cases and most recently in a library case in the Tenth Circuit in which the opinion was released only three weeks ago. I look forward to the thoughts of Professors Nimmer and Lunny on prior jurisprudence and whether Congress should bring greater clarity to this fundamental issue of copyright law. The second issue concerns the scope of copyright protection for broadcast. <laughs> Although the U.S. is not a party to the Rome Convention, ongoing discussions in Geneva could result in additional copyright or other protection for broadcasters in an effort to deter signal theft. Broadcasting has changed significantly since the Rome Convention was signed in 1961. Smartphones with an always-on Internet connection now make everyone in this room a broadcaster in ways that were unimaginable 50 years ago. I look forward to hearing from Professor Schultz and Mr. Love on this topic. Finally, we will hear about an issue that has received less public attention than the other two, but is one that does go to the heart of how citizens interact with their government. It was also the subject of the very first copyright case heard by the Supreme Court in 1834. Copyright protection for laws, codes, and standards appears to clash with the fundamental ability of our citizens to know what laws and regulations they must live by. It is fortunate that the number of states seeking to claim copyright protection on their laws and regulations, despite long-standing copyright office and administration views to the contrary, has sharply declined. However, the I issue of copyright protection for codes and standards incorporated within them is more nuanced. Recognizing that codes and standards are developed at some expense by private sector entities, I look forward to hearing from a representative of the American National Standards Institute and an individual who has made greater access to government information, including the videos of congressional hearings like these, his long-standing mission. Before I conclude my opening remarks, let me turn to a few other issues not being heard today. I'm sure that there is no one in this hearing room who isn't aware that the Supreme Court announced on Friday that it will hear oral arguments later this spring in the Aereo case <coughs> regarding another issue related to the scope of copyright, the public performance right. The court also announced Friday that will, it will hear oral arguments in two cases with implications for the patent troll issue, something this committee and the House has already addressed. These three intellectual property cases are, in addition to earlier patent cases, taken up only a few months ago by the justices. It is hard for me not to notice that, once again, this committee continues to lead the way on critical policy issues. I want to thank the witnesses again for their time here today and for their flexibility in their schedules to enable them to be here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.